over to our Alex Bell with former police chief Daniel Hahn tonight. Uh, he is live in the newsroom uh, to try and talk through this tragedy with us. Yeah, Chris, that's right. We have uh, Chief Hahn here to give us some perspective really on what happened. And so I first want to show some video because it actually does show what happened last night. Again, this is horrific video. We do want to warn people, but if we could roll on that so Chief Hahn could see it as well. Now, Chief Han, we've seen this video circulating all over online, and I do want to ask you, you were the chief back in August when a shooting happened in Old Town just about five weeks ago. We had a shooting at a church, and then now we're seeing this shooting. I mean, what is your initial first reaction when you see such a horrific video? I mean, you're hearing screams, you're seeing people running, you're hearing rapid gunfire. What are your thoughts? Well, I mean, it's it's uh, being from Sacramento and living here, it's it's uh, hits really home when you see that in your own city. But we see this every day uh, in some city across our country, the violence, the gun violence, all sorts of violence. And it just shows that there's something lacking in our society that needs to be addressed, that people are more than willing to settle their differences with violence. And does it alarm you to see these multiple uh, fatality shootings right here in Sacramento? Does that concern you? Well, all in one incident is very unusual, thankfully, but you know, there's, Every year we lose more than six people throughout a period of time in the different neighborhoods, in certain neighborhoods in our, in our community. And it does not get the attention that something like this is getting. But all in one uh, incident, having six people uh, murdered and 16 other people shot is very unusual. And I do want to talk about something that you posted on Twitter earlier today. You said the answer isn't huge law enforcement or zero tolerance. The answer isn't only social services and community organizations. The solutions lay in real collaboration and addressing the immediate safety issues, but more importantly, the root causes of this violence. So I want to ask you, when you say root causes, what do you mean by that? Well, even for the last couple of years and throughout history, we've had this debate. So in the last couple of years, we've debated, do we have, do we increase law enforcement or do we eliminate law enforcement? And those are the extremes that aren't the answer. And so, for example, here in Sacramento, downtown, you'll see, I'm sure, an increased law enforcement presence in the downtown core in the coming days. Those officers come from somewhere else. So you're taking an officer out of another critical duty and putting them down. That's not sustainable. Mm. So it has to be addressed. To why are people willing to do this? The poverty, the ed lack of education in certain communities, and, and the la lack of hope in our community among certain uh, communities that make it okay to be violent like this. Now, do you think this shooting in downtown Sacramento last night, do you think it was targeted? Do you think it was random? Do you think it was gun violence? What's your opinion? Well, who knows, but I, I'm guessing somebody did intend at shooting at somebody else. Unfortunately, they're in a large crowd, and obviously there are people that were not involved in the incident that were part of this, as hundreds and hundreds of people were downtown at this time. Now, we already know this is a large investigation. I mean, we're talking a lot of people in a large area. Where do you start when you see this many people being injured? Well, you see the frustration on behalf of families trying to get information of whether their loved ones were part of this. I, too, lost my younger brother to gun violence in this community, and I was the one that had to call my mom and tell her and listen to her cry about her youngest son being killed. So I understand that. 
At the same time, there's officers, as you heard in the press conference, that heard these gunshots. So they're responding to the scene, trying to address the violence that's going on at that time, trying to ensure that the gun uh, shots aren't going off anymore. At the same time, they're observing people, obviously, that were injured and hundreds of people running probably in all directions in a very chaotic scene. At the same time, eventually they have to transition into preserving evidence, getting witness statements, all the markers you see on the ground, ensuring that that's not disturbed, secure the scene. So it's a very chaotic scene coordinating with fire, ambulance crews, the hospitals to get people aid. At the same time, having the ability to hold the people that are responsible for this accountable in, a, in their day in court. Now we've seen a lot of video, you know, circulating on social media, online. How has social media really impacted how you guys handle your investigations now? Well, it's like most everything, it's good and bad. So it's, it's uh, increased the ability to get information out really quick, but it's also accessible to everybody. So a lot of misinformation gets out really quick that can cause challenges for any investigation or even people hearing something about their loved ones that either isn't true or that's not the way you want to tell somebody about where their loved one is. So it's both good and bad. Yeah. And, and what needs to be done to really solve this? What measures do you think need to be taken and how quickly do you think something like this is going to get solved, this incident? Well, I think throughout history, anytime you see an increase in, gun, in not just gun violence, but violence in, in general, an increase in gang activity, increase even in hate crime or hate group membership, that means there's something lacking in society. Uh, so people join gangs because they're missing something. They want to feel part of something. They want a family. They want uh, to be appreciated, all those sort of things. They want something to care about. Same thing with hate, crime, hate groups. And so as we see this increase in crime over the last couple of years, increase in hate crime, increase in hate membership and violent crime in our city, it's, it's another sign that we need to concentrate on things like poverty and, and hope in, in all of our communities, not just in a select few. And then two more questions for you here. Are shortages in the police force going to make it harder for them to do their jobs when it comes to this investigation? Oh, absolutely. Anytime something like this happens, people are going to want to have a bigger presence in downtown. The businesses are, people in, are going to be thinking about this incident when they are considering to go downtown for dinner or for a concert. And so as a city, we want people to feel comfortable, not only downtown, but in all our neighborhoods. But when we move those resources there, they're coming from somewhere else. And so somewhere else is gonna be short of those resources. And the police department is smaller now than it was 12 years ago. And so it just becomes a bigger challenge. And last question here, for people that maybe do have information, but they're just scared to speak out, what do you say to those people that have real information that could help uh, investigators with this incident? And that is a legit challenge. And people are fearful and rightfully so. And so they can always cr call Crime Alert and truly remain anonymous. Um, a lot of times people have relationships with people in the police department or other community groups. They can remain anonymous and call those. The important thing is to get the information, whatever information they might have, as insignificant as they might think it is, it might be the last piece that helps the police officers and the detectives solve the crime. So I would say you can remain anonymous, truly anonymous, but getting that information to the appropriate people is important. All right, Chiton, thank you so much. We thank appreciate you. your time and for you being here. And again, a horrific incident. Now we want to turn things over to Giacomo Luca. He is at the press conference with more information.